Welcome back to Farm and Hammer, everyone. This video is a little bit different, and I uh, just warn you, um, this is not animal abuse. Uh, it does not look good, I will tell you that. Um, but it is necessary to get this cow um, back up and going. So, so this heifer had a very difficult birth, and when cows have difficult births, occasionally you can have an issue called calving paralysis. So basically when the calf is super big, and the cow is just having a terrible time getting it out, it can sometimes cause damage to the nerves. In this particular case, that's what happened. She has extreme nerve damage. Um, her back legs are not working, so she'll try to get up. She can get her front feet out from under her, but she can't get her back legs to move. Sometimes this is chronic. They end up just honestly being put down because they don't get better. Um, but sometimes it can take them two to three weeks and those nerves come back and they can start walking again. So that's what we're hoping for and uh, we're going to do all the things necessary to make that happen. And to make that happen, there's a thing called a hip lift. So this hip lift, you can turn the handle counterclockwise and it opens it up wider. Turn it clockwise, it shrinks it down. It has padding on both sides uh, that you can slide right over the hips just to make it a little more comfortable. Once you get it over the hips, you crank it down. Um, and honestly, you do have to get it pretty tight. Not super, super tight, but you do need to get it relatively tight. Uh, because you don't want it slipping off of her hip bones whenever you pick her up. Because once again, you can fracture the edges of her hip bone and she could also fall on the ground and break something up. So um, you want to make sure it's tight enough, but not too tight. she's really struggling to get up like I said it looks terrible I know um, but like I said it is necessary in order for her to get better the point of this hip lift is to get some more circulation in her legs when she lays down on the same side every day one of her legs is not going to be getting circulation she's she's going to cut it up once again this hip lift just to get her up in the air get her used to standing again um, get some blood flowing and hopefully get those nerves I'm starting to work again she is up in the air she can't control her legs as I mentioned and uh, she kept walking on her knuckles there um, her hoof would curl back and that's the only way she was able to stand up so she couldn't control her foot enough to get her hoof out from under her and actually stand on it so uh, I did walk around a couple times trying to straighten it out but this first time it was not going trying to get one at a time. These calves are a couple days old um, and they're still kind of used to drinking off the cow. So 
I'm trying to help him out, show him where the udder is, and uh, get them started. Her calf was big, it was also dead, so she doesn't have a calf to nurse. Because she's half dairy, she has a ton of milk, and if you don't milk her out, she also has a chance of getting mastitis. And that can also, once again, make her sick and eventually kill her. Um, to prevent that, once again, you just have to get all the milk out of her like she would be nursed by a calf. And we got three little calves to bring along. And uh, once again, I don't expect her to raise all of these calves when she does get better, but I do want to get all the milk out of her as quickly as possible because um, I don't want to hang her in the air too long because once again that can also do damage. So by the time I pick her up and set her down I want that to be 10 minutes or less so the calves have about 8 or 9 minutes to drink um, and then I'll put them back in their little cage there. So just don't want to hang her in the air too long and cause more damage. Of course, after all is said and done, I let her down. Once again, I know it looks terrible, uh, but it is necessary. Just trying to get her down. There's no easy way, a graceful way to do it. And then after she's down, I'll give her more water. She does have water, get water three times a day. And I also give her hay and her so. This is a week and a half since the first time you saw me lift the cow up. The calves are still in here. 
Um, it did rain last night for the first time, but calves are growing, calves are doing really well. Um, they like this little pallet here for shade. So anyway, so I know a lot of you are wondering why I have the calves in this little cage, um, why I don't just let them out in this field here. Um, and that is because whenever I come to lift this cow up, I have to get them out and show them where the cow is because they still don't know where the milk comes from. So um, I do have to handle them twice a day, every day, show them where the milk is. And I don't want to come out here in the dark in the morning before work and then be a half mile that way. So, yeah, so this is easy. I don't have to look for them. They're also safe in here. There's a bunch of coyotes around here and uh, these little 40 pound Jersey cows wouldn't really stand a chance against coyotes. So um, they're safe in this little pen here. But as you guys can see, uh, the good news is this cow, I helped her up this morning, tractor broke down. So we are now using the Dewey's bed um, with the hip lift. But I lifted her up this morning and uh, she is currently standing all on her own, trying to balance. And uh, this is the first time she's actually stood up by herself and been balancing herself. So this is a little over a week and a half in the making and she is making progress. So uh, just because your cow is paralyzed from calving does not mean she can't eventually get over it. Um, sometimes it is temporary, sometimes it is permanent. So I'm hoping this is a temporary case. Her back right leg is doing great. Um, her back left, as you can see, she, uh, she hasn't been able to straighten it out all the way yet. Um, but she's been standing here by herself for about 10 minutes. When I did get her up the first time, when I did get her up, I did have to stabilize her from her tailbone here um, because she was tip, tipping side to side. So I just held her here um, until she figured out how to stabilize herself. And now she's standing on her own. She's eating grain. She was drinking water there. Um, yeah, so big improvements. Um, like I like I had mentioned, I know the hip lift does not look humane. It does not look good. Um, but it is what you got to do and it does sometimes like in this situation it does really help and it allows her to stay on the farm and uh i know a lot of people wouldn't have the patience for this but um some farmers do and i'm one of them i'd rather give every animal a chance if they can so um anyway i think she is going to come out of it as you can see she is a little wobbly still um let's see if she can she somehow there we go. Okay. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying now. Definitely not fun for the farmer to do because once again, it looks terrible. We know they're in pain, uh, but it is what you got to do along with rolling them over. Right there, so. um, anyway, this is a success story. I will try to keep you guys updated. Hopefully here in another week, she'll be getting up on her own. Um, in a week and a half, she is now able to stand on her own and balance by herself. So that's good. Hopefully in another week and a half after a little more physical therapy, uh, we can get her standing up on her own, walking to the pond on her own, and eventually feeding calves on her own. Uh, those three little boogers are pretty aggressive on her and they bump pretty hard. And so she still can't balance without a little stabilization from me with them nursing. So um, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, like I said, with a little more physical therapy and work with her, um, I think I think she'll come out of it. I think she'll be able to walk here in a week. So, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. And I will see you all next time.